Yes, 72 years old gentleman with uh, CA cecum with intersusception underwent laparoscopic right hemicolectomy. He had synchronous liver mits also. Six cycles of uh, Fall Fox he showed partial response. So, predominantly tumor was on the left globe and one small in the segment 5 close to segment 4. So, he underwent left epitectomy with caudate lobectomy. So, we can see there is a right posterior duct joining distally into the CBD. This was segment 4A tumor which was close to the middle hepatic vein and that was slightly posterior and kephala to the biliary confluence. We also see the other tumors. So patient had uh, LHA coming from PHA and middle hepatic artery from RHA or the right hepatic artery. So middle hepatic vein and left hepatic vein were entering separately into the IVC. We can see the segment 4A which was close to uh, MHV and type 3 portal vein anatomy in concordance with type 3 biliary anatomy. So care should be taken while transecting. So this was the usual line of transection but since the patient had a, a biliary confluence which was anterior to the segment 4 lesion or segment 4 lesion was just posterior and cephalar. So this was the plane of uh, original transection. So it was if we go straight we may damage the right anterior sectoral duct. So staging laparoscopy showed uh, segment 3, segment 4A of I tumor. We took down the falciform ligament and then the left triangular and coronary ligaments. So the gastrohepatic ligament was also taken down till the level of Ranchi's ligament. Then we started dissecting the hilum. The peritoneum on it was opened up. Because of chemotherapy, there was significant fibrosis uh, of the tissues surrounding the hepatodiodinal ligament. So as we can see, there is significant fibrosis. Usually it will be loose areola tissues. It was fibrosed. So care was taken to avoid uh, inadvertent injury to any major vessel. So dissection was carried on to the umbilical plate level. So the middle hepatic artery was dissected. It was branching from the right hepatic artery. And once it was looped, it was divided after applying hemolock. Then small, small twig going into the uh, segment two or three was also divided. And once that was divided, we started seeing the left portal vein. So significant fibrosis made uh, dissection quite challenging. Sometimes uh, a vein can be mistaken for fibrosis tissue and that can be taken down. So it was quite slow. We spent nearly an hour or so to loop the left hepatic, I'm sorry, left portal vein. So as we dissect slowly and slowly, we are seeing the branches of the portal vein and the left portal vein. So that horizontal branch is the branch to the segment 2. And below there may be branches to the caudate lobe. So the right side of the portal vein was now dissected. Yeah, we are able to pass an instrument between the uh, left portal vein and the liver posteriorly but a uh, small branch to the caudate was inadvertently injured. So further dissection, we made sure that we dissected completely before going in. So that stopped with compression. So that region showed uh, the dissected off left portal vein from the right side. So yeah that's the branch to the caudate lobe and the segment 3 branch so we have to go in between them we thought we will uh, loop the segment 3 branch it was ligated doubly so in, even in case if it is uh, avulsed one will take care
and then what we did was we lifted this segment to branch and then try to dissect more then we found the proper left hepatic artery which was giving branch to the segment 2a the left hepatic artery was also continuing towards the fissure into the phrenic artery or as the phrenic artery and when this dissection was carried out nicely we found a gap between the caudate branch and that of the segment 2 branch then we introduced the right angle since the dissection was already done on the right side we were able to loop the left portal vein then a hemolock was applied on the left portal vein and once we applied we were able to see the line of demarcation nicely seen line of demarcation so you could actually come including the uh, metastasis on the segment 5 or 4a but in ct we saw that uh, that could damage the middle hepatic vein so we thought we will do a non-anatomical resection of the vegetative section once we completed this so if we see initially we'll be going towards the right and posterior for some distance and then we will turn into the proper middle hepatic vein plane so preparation for pringle maneuver was done small branches of venous branches were taken down and then we started using CUSA we can clearly see that the hepatocytes on the branches are absorbed by the CUSA giving us way or space for ligating the veins so there we can see the line of demarcation and as I said earlier we turn more on to the plane of middle hepatic vein rather than going towards the right shoulder so we try to trace the middle hepatic vein staying close to it so that we will reach the segment 4a metastasis so once we see any twigs going uh, across CUSA helps us to absorb the hepatocytes above below some space is created so that we can apply clips on the either side and to cut in between thereby the blood loss also comes down significantly small small picks less than a millimeter or less than two millimeters can be taken down directly with uh, thunderbeat so right hand we were using CUSA and left hand we were using thunderbeat so the time taken comes down significantly So small small tricks again are taken down with the thunder beat though the preparation of Pringle was done we didn't apply Pringle uh, so far and in fact we didn't apply throughout the left epidectomy it was applied only during the caudate lobectomy so again we were showing you the uh, caudocephalad dissection in the laparoscopic epidectomy usually what happens in open epidectomy will come from anterior to posterior but here as we saw initially we finished the caudal uh, parenchymal transection and then we move towards the cephalate parenchymal transection so small small venous branches or uh, hepatic duct branches were taken down between the clips CUSA helps us to as I said uh, make some space over these twigs on either side so that clips can be satisfactorily applied at a quite away distance and then divided in between and once this was done we started tracing the middle hepatic vein major middle hepatic vein and its branch so the inferior capsule was divided and then we were going on the inferior border of the segment 4 or otherwise on the biliary confluence or the hilar plate so that's the region of the hilar plate so usually what happens the hilar plate will be formed by the segment or the left hepatic duct here it was formed by the confluence of right anterior hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct so division should be predominantly more towards the left side in order to inadvertent clipping of the right anterior sectoral duct also so the middle hepatic vein branch was clipped and then divided so peripheral hepatic ducts were uh, taken between the clips we can clearly see the difference between the hepatic vein and the hepatic duct and once all those were done the left hepatic duct or the biliary confluence in this case 
the hilar plate is formed by the biliary confluence not just by the hepatic duct because of the type 3 portal and hepatic anatomy and that was uh, taken down with the help of uh, laparoscopic stapler so since it uh, contained portal vein hepatic duct and the plate we used a blue stapler and once that was fired we will be able to see the segment 4a metastasis there yeah that's the segment 4a metastasis just cephalar and posterior like it is not just on the plane of the biliary confluence it is just posterior also so cusa was applied since it was very close to the middle hepatic vein and that's the middle hepatic vein and that is the mets so few branches were directly draining from the metastasis into the middle hepatic vein which were uh, dissected with the cusa and were taken down with clips and once that was done posteriorly we just had a, a parenchyma and the few hepatic venous branches which were again taken down sharply or with the help of cusa larger branches were taken down in between clips so usually there stays a umbilical hepatic vein which is usually a branch of middle or left or directly into the ivc so that was identified clipped and then the last few parenchyma along with the left hepatic vein was taken down with the help of blue stapler usually white stapler is necessary for left hepatic vein but since we were transecting some amount of uh, parenchyma also we used blue and after that uh, we saw the transected stapled transected the left hepatic vein few parenchyma which was left behind for safety purpose we applied just a hemolock and then divided last few attachments of the left coronary and the triangular ligaments were taken down sharply with the help of thunderbeat so thunderbeat advantages it coagulates and then dissects decreasing the instrument exchanges and there with the time taken also so gospies was kept and as we decided earlier the segment 5 segment 4b uh, metastasis was uh, taken down like a wedge resection connecting this to the previous uh, transection surface as seen in the ct we will be definitely crossing the middle hepatic vein so that was carefully dissected and the uh, middle hepatic vein was clipped and once that was clipped we divided it and the metastatectomy or the wedge hepatic resection was completed we purposefully avoided the cholestatum in the initial period because gallbladder can be used for retraction purpose and that was done at last only so a gauze piece was kept there also then we lifted the falcif uh, ligamentum venosum on the falciform ligament aminosum then started dividing the caudate lobe for non anatomical resection since there was no inflow control we applied pringles for this only 7 minutes was the total time we applied pringles in the entire procedure the care has to be taken to avoid inadvertent injury to the ivc when we pull the caudate lobe the chances of injuring ivc is there so that is the exposed ivc from within the caudate lobe so caudate lobectomy or non abdominal caudate lobectomy was also completed cholecystectomy was done inadvertently uh, uh, gallbladder got opened while doing cholecystectomy and by leak was uh, there from the gallbladder only and uh, once specimen was removed a thorough wash was given to check for any uh, by leak or uh, bleeding so that was stained from the leaked bile when gallbladder was opened anyways we kept a gauze piece fresh gauze piece on the that region to check after specimen removal whether the bile leak was there so we removed all the gauze pieces and the hemostasis and biliostasis were ensured so we can see the dissection above and below the ligament of menosum and a doubtful segment 4 branch was clipped for uh, safety purposes we kept a drain and uh, completed the procedure patient got discharged on post op day 4 thank you